Hi everyone, I would love to present iGibson Challenge 2021, co-organized with the second Embodied AI workshop at CVPR 2021. The challenge is hosted by the Stanford Vision and Learning Lab and Robotics at Google. My name is Cheng Shu Li, and I'm one of the co-organizers of the challenge. In recent years, Embodied AI research have produced impressive results in vision-based indoor autonomous navigation. However, these solutions are usually studied and deployed in static environments such as warehouses and have limited applicability to the dynamic scenarios that are inherent to human environments such as homes and offices. In these spaces, we find a large variety of objects with which the robot can interact, such as furniture, shoes, toys, laundry that are lying on the floor. We also find humans, ourselves, living in these environments, walking around and performing everyday activities. How to train embodied agents that cope with dynamic environments still remains a challenging research question. Therefore, this year, we want our challenge to focus on navigation in dynamic environments. On the left-hand side, you can see an example of the robot interacting with dynamic objects, such as furniture, shoes, hats, toys that can be pushed around by the robot based on physics simulation. On the right-hand side, you can see an example of the robot interacting with dynamic agents. In this case, these are simulated pedestrians with predefined trajectories. This year's challenge has two different track for two tasks. The first track is called interactive navigation. The agent is required to reach a navigation goal specified by coordinate given RGBD images. The agent is allowed or even encouraged to collide and interact with the environment in order to push obstacles away to clear the path. Note that all objects in our scenes are assigned realistic physical weight and they are fully interactable. Along with the furniture objects that are originally in the scenes, we also add additional objects such as shoes and toys to simulate real world clutter. The second tract is social navigation. The agent is required to navigate among pedestrians in the environment. The pedestrians in the scene move towards randomly sampled locations and their movement is simulated using a social force model called ORCA that is referenced below. ORCA was integrated into our simulator I Gibson. The robot agent needs to avoid collision with the pedestrians, otherwise the episode will terminate. It should also maintain a comfortable distance to them in order to respect their personal space. For the environment setup, we use a simulated local bot. The observation includes the goal, the current velocities, and RGBD images. The action space is a twist command. The reward function is up to the participant's design, and the episode will terminate if the robot exceeds 500 time steps or it collides with any of the pedestrians. We provide eight fully interactive scenes as the training set, two scenes as the dev set, and five scenes as the test set. For evaluation metrics, for interactive navigation, we use interactive navigation score, INS, as our evaluation metrics. INS is an average of SPL and effort efficiency. SPL stands for success weighted by shortest path, uh, by path length, sorry. Effort efficiency captures both excess of displaced math, kinematic effort, and applied force, dynamic effort, for interaction with objects. We argue that the agent needs to strike a healthy balance between taking a shorter path to the goal and causing less disturbance to the environment. For social navigation, we will use the social navigation score, which is an average of STL and PSC. STL is short for success weighted by time length, similar to how SPL is computed. The shortest time is measured by the time spent by an ORCA controlled robot agent to achieve the same goal. In the context of social navigation, we argue that STL is more applicable than SPL because a robot agent can achieve perfect SPL by just waiting out all the pedestrians before it makes a move, which sort of defeats the purpose of the task and also can take a really long time. The other component is at a PSC, personal space compliance. This is computed as the percentage of time steps that a robot agent comply with the pedestrian's personal space. In our definition, the personal space distance is threshold is 1.5 meter. We argue that the agent needs to strike a healthy balance between taking a shorter time to reach the goal and incurring less personal space violation to the pedestrians. Next, we're very excited to announce our winners for this year's challenge for interactive navigation. Uh, the top three winners are Naoki Yakuyama, Wei Yuan Li, and uh, Yan Xinglong. For social navigation, the top three winners are Feng Gao, Chong Liu, and Wei Yuan Li. Uh, we would love to give a round of applause to our winners. Next, we will show some video highlights for each of the track. On the left-hand side, we show the winning team of interactive navigation track, Georgia Tech. The policy performs quite nicely despite a large number of clutter objects that are scattered around the floor. The robot learns to push these light objects away in order to clear the path while avoiding pushing other heavy objects such as chairs and tables. On the right, we show the winning team of social navigation track, NICSEFC. The policy also performs quite well around a decent number of pedestrians that are also moving rapidly in the same space. There are a few cases where the, uh, the robot almost hits the pedestrian, uh, but the policy was able to react in time to swerve the robot away. 
across different submission teams, uh, people mostly use model-free reinforcement learning algorithms. Some teams use SAC with continuous action space, whereas others use PPO with discrete action space. Quite a few teams have very interesting algorithmic design to improve or robustify their methods. For example, LPAAS team use extensive image augmentation on the RGB space while regularizing the uh, Q function to have similar prediction. The um, LPACSI team use explicit pedestrian detection and localization module with YOLO v3 and a force model that learns to balance pedestrian avoidance and goal seeking. Moving on to more analysis of quantitative results, we're glad to see that there's fierce competition among participants during the final test phase. The main metrics shown on these plots of the leading team are only two, 3% apart from each other. Some teams are better off in terms of SPL or STL, while others perform better in F efficiency or personal space com compliance. And we observe that the teams that strike the best balance between different metrics emerge as the top winners. Finally, we will take a look at the qualitative results for each track. In the following visualization, the robot will be represented as the blue circle, the goal as the green circle, and the clutter objects, and later on, the pedestrians as the red circle. First, we will show two successful episodes in the interactive navigation track. In both episodes, the agent is able to um, push away a one or more clutter objects. Um, and um, that is blocking the way and finally achieve success. Then we show two failure cases due to timeout. Uh, in both episodes, the agent is a bit overwhelmed by the number of cluttered objects that is blocking the way. It ends up either wandering uh, off into the wrong room or getting stuck when trying to push multiple objects simultaneously. And in both cases, they fail to retract and correct its past mistakes. Next, we move on to social navigation. First, we will show two successful episodes. Um, just note that the pedestrians are represented with the red circles. Uh, in the first episode, the agent almost hits the pedestrian, but it is able to turn left uh, on time to achieve success. In the second episode, the agent is a little bit more conservative, uh, moving in very low speed when multiple pedestrians are around and even back up when necessary. However, once the path is clear, it goes straight to the goal without hesitation. The next two failure cases are due to pedestrian collision. In the first episode, the agent tries to sneak between one pedestrian and the wall, but unfortunately ends up colliding with that pedestrian. In the second episode, the agent uh, actually hits the pedestrian when it's backing up from the wall. This becomes a debatable question whether it's the robot's fault, actually, because it's RGBD camera cannot see anything that is in the back. The next two failure cases are due to timeout. Uh, in the first episode, the agent didn't know what to do around these many pedestrians in the hallway um, and uh, decided to take the wrong turn into the wrong room. In the second episode, the agent was forced onto the wall by a pedestrian um, because it is trying to avoid that pedestrian. Um, however, it got stuck there and wasn't able to take a right turn from there. Right, after the, after the analysis of the results, here are some of the key takeaways that we think might shed some light on future research in robot learning for mobility in dynamic environments. First of all, navigation in dynamic environments is still far from being soft. Dynamic objects are very challenging because the agent needs to balance between obstacle avoidance and goal seeking. Our participants policy tend to be more on the conservative spec, uh, spectrum and uh, didn't attempt to interact with the clutter objects as much as they should to achieve higher success rate. Uh, dynamic agents are also super challenging um, because theoretically speaking, the robot really needs to understand humans' intent and predict their behavior. Most of our participants' policies, on the other hand, use more of a reactive and model-free approach by training with negative reward when the robot gets too close to the pedestrians. We're interested in learning how these methods will compare against more of the uh, model-based approach that has prediction, planning, control in the loop. Secondly, we believe that simulating pedestrians is super challenging. Uh, although we make a significant first step to incorporate photorealistic humans into the iGibson 3D environment, there's still a lot that needs to be done. For example, currently our pedestrians are just walking around in the scenes. It will be very interesting to model realistic human behavior in their home, such as talking in a circle, sitting on the couch, or interacting with home appliances. It will also be interesting to simulate realistic human motion with their limbs moving around, for instance. And we have already seen many exciting research along this line in the computer graphics community. Finally, designing metrics for interactive and social navigation is tough, mainly because in these dynamic environments, it is typically a multi-objective optimization problem. The robot should try to achieve the goal with the shortest path or the minimal time, but also it shouldn't destroy the house or harm the humans. We made our first attempt in designing these metrics in the challenge, uh, but we are still constantly thinking about what would be the best metrics for these dynamic uh, scenarios. Finally, I would love to thank all my colleagues, the co-organizer of this challenge. I also want to say thank you for all the participants again for the time and effort they have put into this challenge. 
We look forward to seeing you all next year. Thank you for your attention.